Hey, this is Jamie Useful Knowledge. Well, I just made homemade dandelion jelly. And I've got a dim light set up behind this because I just want to show you how beautiful this jelly ended up. So if you'll stay tuned, I'll teach you exactly how to make homemade dandelion jelly. And I'll show you how I can it using the open kettle method. Okay, so I'm out near the edge of my field and found a pretty good bit of dandelions. They were actually all over the place. So I'm going to pick these. So what you need to do if you're picking them, you need to get about a half a gallon of them and maybe a little bit more because you're going to separate the flowers from all the green parts after you pick them. The ultimate goal is to come up with at least four cups. For those of you that's watched my honeysuckle video, you realize that four cups seems to be the magic number when you're making jelly out of wildflowers. Okay, here's my eight cups of dandelions. And it took me about probably an hour to pick them all. It's a lot of bending over. So just a heads up, if you're going to go out picking dandelions, you're going to have to bend over a lot. So now what we're going to do, we're going to separate that green part from the flower. It's a little tedious work, but it will be well worth it. Okay, I'm zoomed in here so I can show you what you need to do to separate the yellow flower from the green part of the flower back here. So what I do, I just take some scissors and I cut that right there. Okay, now at that point you're still going to have some of these green little leaves trying to hold on. Alright, so pinch the end of the yellow flower and just kind of pluck those out and you'll get them out pretty quick. And just go around till you got no more. And there you go. Now this is tedious, but it's going to make your jelly taste a lot better by getting out all these, these green parts because that's the bitter part right there. Okay, here's our end product after removing all the green from our dandelion flowers. Now it's a lot of work to get to this point, but it's going to make your jelly taste great. Okay, we're going to start making our tea. And first thing we do is we're going to pour in five cups of water into our pot. And this is just a three-quart pot. Okay, we're going to turn that on to a bowl. Okay, our water's boiling, and we're going to add our dandelion petals. And now we're just going to turn that down to about a medium. We're going to mix these in. So if you see anything like a little green leaf or anything like that that accidentally got in there, just get those out. Okay, our dandelion flowers and water is back up to a boil. We're just going to go ahead and turn this off. And then we're just going to let it cool down. Okay, our dandelion tea has been steeping for about two hours. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run this through some cheesecloth. Now, you can put it through a coffee filter if you want to, if you don't have any cheesecloth. Okay, we just got done filtering that tea through our cheesecloth. And... We have right at four cups. All right, so that's what we're going to make our jelly with. And that's why it's important to start out with five cups of water when you're making that tea. Because if you don't, you won't end up with four cups of, um, of tea when, when you're ready to make your jelly. Okay, if you made it this far, we are about to make our dandelion jelly. So... What are our ingredients? First ingredient is the dandelion tea you just made. That's four cups of dandelion tea. We're going to use four and a half cups of sugar. I use organic sugar, but your regular white sugar will work just fine. We need pectin. In this case, I use Sure Gel, and that's a 1.75 ounce box of Sure Gel. And we're going to need two tablespoons of lemon juice, and I always squeeze that fresh. You're going to need a pot. I use my Old Faithful six quart pot. You're gonna need a canning funnel and a ladle. Also, you're gonna need a, a large spoon just to stir this up, and I use a wooden spoon. Over here, we've got a pot that we're gonna heat our lids up in. And talking about lids, you're gonna need lids and rings for seven mason jars. And those mason jars are the 8 ounce jelly jars. So to get started, I'm placing 7 8 ounce jelly jars 
in the oven at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our dandelion tea in our pot. Next, we're gonna put two tablespoons of lemon juice, and that was fresh squeezed from the lemon I showed you a minute ago. And next, we're gonna put one package of Sure Gel. We're just gonna stir this up. You wanna get all that Sure Gel dissolved. Now we're gonna turn this on a high. So we're gonna bring this up to a boil and we're gonna let it boil at a full rolling boil for one minute. And then we're gonna put in our sugar. So once you get all the Sure Gel dissolved, you do not have to stir it constantly. But you should stir it often. So a full rolling boil is a boil that will not dissipate while you're stirring it. And we are almost there. So you want to boil it at a full rolling boil for one minute, stirring constantly. Okay, we've been at a full rolling boil for one minute. So now we need to add in our sugar. And this is four and a half cups of sugar. Right, and you're gonna stir that in till it melts and we're gonna bring this up to a full rolling boil now you don't have to stir it constantly but stir it often as it comes up to temperature okay we're starting to boil and that's not dissipating so we're gonna start a minute out from now so at this point I want you to be careful and watch and see how this foams up so don't let it get too high, especially those with electric eyes. You'll want to stay on it. You may have to reduce the temperature just slightly while still maintaining your full rolling boil. I just pushed mine down to medium high just to make sure it didn't boil over. So keep an eye on that. Keep stirring. Okay, we've been at a full rolling boil for one minute. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So now what we're going to do as this comes down off that full rolling boil, we're going to get this skim out. Looks like most of that skim is going to dissipate. And I'm going to get a little spoon and get that out. Most of the rest of that will dissipate as it cools slightly. All right, well, we're going to get our jars out of the oven and then we're going to can it. Okay, we just took our jars out of the oven and this has just stopped boiling. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fill up our jars. So you want to fill that just to the bottom of your canning funnel and that'll give you, in most cases, the perfect headspace on your jars. So I get asked about open kettle canning all the time. I was taught this as a child. And I really think the secret to open kettle canning is to be quick. Fill up your jars quickly. Don't let this jelly or whatever you're canning come down off that high temperature of almost boiling. And look at that, we got seven perfect jars. Okay, now we're going to get our lids and bands on. Okay, at this point, I just filled up my jars. I am going to wipe the top of each jar with a damp paper towel. That's what I'm doing right here. And that just gets any possible bit of jelly that may have gotten on the top of that jar when you're filling them up. And that shouldn't have, but it always somehow does. See, I got a little bit right there. And this is going to help your seal. You're going to have that clean top of the jar and it's going to seal a lot better than it would if you had some jelly up on top. Now we're going to put our lids on. I've got this nifty little magnet one here. We're just going to pull those out. I'm going to dry each one of them off with a paper towel just like that and we're going to put the lid on. I'm going to just set that lid on. Okay, we're putting our last lid on. Now we're just going to put our bands on. Don't be fooled, these are very hot. Okay, once you get the bands on there, you want to tighten them. So this is where I do put an oven glove on, and we're just going to tighten them up like that, and we're going to turn them over. These are going to stay turned over for five minutes. And I have people asking me all the time, why don't you turn them over? What that does is any contaminant that may have got on that lid 
when I was doing all this process of putting the lid on, is going to be destroyed by that hot jelly as it's sitting there. So we're going to do that for five minutes and then we're going to turn them back over. Okay, these have been upside down for five minutes and we're just going to turn them back over. And then we're going to let them cool down overnight and check them in the morning. Now as these cool down, you will hear a ping and that just means they sealed. It usually takes about 30 minutes before you hear your first ping. Okay, it's the next morning and all of our jars are perfectly sealed. So how do you know they're sealed? Press the middles of them. If they won't go in and then pop back out, they're sealed. They're going to be slightly indented. And several of these pinged really loud last night when they were sealing. Okay, let's try this out and see what we got. The color is perfect. It's just a perfect golden honey color and it looks like it's gelled really good. Oh yeah, it looks really good. The gel's perfect on it. You can see there, it gelled really nice. And that's only with four and a half cups of sugar. So this is basically the same recipe I use with my honeysuckle jelly recipe, except I use a little bit less lemon. So there you go. You see how well it gelled. It's great. So we're going to get some toast going. And we're going to try this out. Well, look who's decided to come in and help us taste this dandelion jelly. It's Miss Pearl. She's all grown up and kind of camera shy. So we hope you gained some useful knowledge on how to make homemade dandelion jelly. And this stuff absolutely tastes great. Now, the hard part and the most time consuming part is separating the flower petals from the green stem areas. But it's worth it. This really does taste great. Thanks for watching.